the DOJ dropped the cases against Flynn and released those damning transcript selections, the DNC media has been putting on a full court press to downplay, dismiss, and discredit all these charges. And why wouldn't they? They're part of this entire con job. They're implicated unless they can convince enough people that this is all just right-wing conspiracy theories. The main charge that everyone's focused on is the unmasking of Flynn. And over at MSNBC, they want to do anything, talk about anything but the facts involved. They're bringing on Democrat and Obama officials to insist they did nothing wrong because they're the best judge of that, right? The president and his allies are laser focused on a different story, one they completely made up, something that they now are calling Obamagate. It means nothing. Because there is no Obamagate. It's the political version of the tooth fairy. It's fantasies and fairy tales, and it's, it means nothing. It, it means, means nothing. nothing. And the Russians clearly interfering in a U.S. election, attacking our democracy. And this is not a scandal any more than Birthergate was. There's absolutely nothing here. I mean, if he was in any safer political standing, he wouldn't still be sucking up to the hardcore base, as Peter Baker just described this effort to be about. Yeah, Nicole, I think that's spot on. We're in mid-May of an election here, and if the president is so panicked about his base, that he's making up scandals about his predecessor, that tells you that he's in trouble. And millions of Americans are not hearing the truth. I want to share just a snippet of how Fox News has gone all in on this completely nonsense story. We learned a lot more about the corruption that spawned the Russia hoax that consumed three years of this country's time. No, we didn't. All of that and none of them at any time mentioned one single fact involved in this scandal. Even when they were calling out Tucker, they didn't show anything relevant. Just a few seconds of his opening monologue. Sorry for the interruption. We'll get right back to the video. I know how much you all love ads. But first, let me tell you about the special offer for my subscribers from this episode's sponsor, Virtual Shield VPN. With the majority of the world's workforce now working from home, VPN security is now preferred. Cyber spying is at an all-time high and a useful tool that you can use to protect yourself is a VPN or virtual private network to scramble your computer's identity from nosy cyber criminals. Here, let me show you how easy this is to protect yourself. I'm going to go to www.virtualshield.com or you can also use the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store and download the Virtual Shield free 30-day trial. Once you've signed up, simply log in download the free trial and install it. Once I'm connected, my IP address is now different than before. See? Virtual Shield is the easiest to use, has the fastest server connections, and offers a money back guarantee. Due to the recent pandemic of COVID-19, Virtual Shield wants to offer a 50% off all VPN plans and all premium add-ons, including Protection Plus, residential access and vip performance plans for as low as a cup of coffee sign up now for a free 30-day trial of virtual shield vpn and see what all the hype's about you have nothing to lose it's quite obvious i think to to anyone who thinks about it that they're they're scraping the bottom of the well here when it comes to looking for conspiracy theories about about the president and about a sort of deep state effort to, uh, 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 to basically undermine Trump's presidency. There's absolutely nothing there, everyone. The Obama official said so on MSNBC. It doesn't get any more objective or democracy defending than that. So that second DNC operative drops the four-year-old talking point that Russia attacked us, attacked our democracy. He is, of course, relying on the fact that MSNBC never reports that this interference consisted of A, Russian trolls that use Pokemon Go to post ads, and B, Russia supposedly hacked the DNC. Where's the evidence? We've always been told that CrowdStrike found that evidence, but according to these DOJ documents, they actually didn't have any. Not to mention, we're now finding out that CIA Director Brennan was covering up intelligence that showed the Russians actually wanted Hillary to win the election. There's four or five other batches of intel, Tucker, and I'm told it could get sticky for John Brennan in particular because of some of the other info. It turns out Obama's CIA chief, John Brennan, also had intel saying actually Russia wanted Hillary Clinton to win. And need I remind you that it was CNN and MSNBC that actually went out and promoted rallies that turned out to be organized by the Russians. So as usual, it seems like the people attacking our democracy are the Democrats and their fake news media. And as far as all of this being a fantasy with nothing there. So asking for names, 
nothing wrong with that. Unmasking in and of itself, nothing wrong with that. Leaking classified information, and by definition, these phone calls were classified. That's a problem, correct? Uh, absolutely, it is. Um, and if anyone did leak the contents of these conversations with or without the name, that would be a problem, yes? Uh, we've lost the shot. I wonder if we can at least get him on the phone to finish this. Let's try to get Director Clapper back. All right, we're going to work we're going to work on getting that shot. Unmasking a source would be necessary. And talk to us about how routine this is. It's absolutely routine, customary, and legal. Leaking classified information. And by definition, these phone calls were classified. That's a problem, correct? Uh, absolutely, it is. Um, nope, nothing there at all. It's perfectly normal for a former intelligence director to run away from an interview when he's asked one tough question about these Obamagate allegations. And what about Biden? His story keeps changing. During an interview with the former Clinton official, George Stephanopoulos, he got caught up in a lie and had to change his story. Biden was asked about a meeting at the White House where he and Obama discussed the Flynn investigation. So what did you know about those moves to investigate uh, Michael Flynn? And was there any Anything improper done I know nothing about those moves to investigate Michael Flynn number one Do you want to press that you say you didn't know anything about it but you were reported to be at a January 5th 2017 meeting where you and the president were briefed on the FBI's plan to question Michael Michael Flynn over those uh, conversations he had with the uh, Russian ambassador Kislyak no I thought you asked me whether or not I had anything to do with him being prosecuted okay I'm sorry I, I, I was aware that there was that there, they asked for an investigation. Then a few days later, he changes it again during an interview on MSNBC, which, of course, the host did not point out or challenge. Uh, Mr. Vice President, what was your involvement in the investigation uh, of Michael Flynn and the FBI investigation of Michael Flynn? I was never a part or had any knowledge of any in criminal investigation into Flynn while I was in office, period. Not one single time. Uh, let's get one more question in here. Nope, 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 nope. Nothing there at all. Better we just do what MSNBC and all those Obama officials told us to do and just move on. Side note, I'm starting to wonder if Biden's constant incoherence won't be used as a defense against these lies and changing stories. That's all for this episode. Please hit that like button, share, and subscribe. If you enjoy this channel and you want to support it, you can do so on one of these platforms. You can find all those links in the description and pinned comment. Thanks for watching. Keep coming back.